It's time for Reflections with Pastor Drayton. Hi and welcome once again to Reflections. This is part two of our anniversary wishes. As I would have shared with you last week, if you saw last week's broadcast, I would have said that my first anniversary of Reflections was actually two days before Good Friday. Well, Good Friday has passed and last week I released a first edition of First Anniversary Wishes. Um, I only shared two of them with you, but I want to share two or three more with you today as time allows. But I've been sharing with you going back, considering what I would share with you regarding the first anniversary of my online ministry being Reflections and Online Church with Pastor D, which comes on Sunday mornings. I thought I would share some of the, not highlights necessarily, but some of the things that I consider to be very, very important and that mean a lot to me. Maybe I should focus on what I think should mean a lot to you, but I'm hoping that what means a lot to me will also mean a lot to you. So last week I talked about purpose and I talked about plans, God's plans for us and then for us to fulfill our purpose, our purposes in Him. I want to go another step today and talk about uh, another wish that I have that is, that is personal, uh, but certainly is a wish I have for all of you who view this broadcast, that certainly as the days go by and the years go by, uh, as the Lord tarries, uh, we believe that the Lord is coming soon again. Uh, people have been preaching that for a very long time, but however long it is that we've been preaching it, He's sooner or closer to being here than He was when we began to preach. So, but we, we do believe that the Lord is coming back soon for His people and that we need to be ready to meet Him. So I want to continue with the third one today, third anniversary wish that I will share with you. And I consider this to be of extreme importance, especially in the time that we live. And another one I'll share with you that contextually is very, very relevant in the time that we live. This third one, our first one for today, is that we know Christ, that we know Christ. I remember being involved with the uh, Interschool Christian Fellowship, ISCF, which had a tremendous impact on my life as a baby Christian, as a young Christian growing up. And uh, their motto was to know Christ and to make him known. Well, certainly the, the second part is extremely important, but what I want to talk about now is the first part. If we look into God's Word and we look into Philippians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul says that I may know him. Uh, here was a man who was very uh, close to God, knew a lot about God, very intelligent, intelligent man, uh, sat at the feet of Gamaliel, he was very well educated, and yet he could say that I may know him. Um, there's another part where he talks about all the knowledge that he had uh, previous to knowing Christ was rubbish, uh, dung, refuse. Um, but here it was that he's saying, I want to know Christ. And as I've been sharing with you on this broadcast on the attributes of God, I still got a couple more that I will share with you as time goes on. But I've, as I've been sharing those with you, especially when I got to the one on God is holy, um, it changed my entire perspective on God. It changed my entire perspective as a result of that on my relationship with God, which is another thing I want to talk about today. But certainly, as I have gotten to know Him through talking about His attributes, His characteristics, uh, who He is, what He does, it gave me a greater understanding of the God that I serve, and it also gave me a better appreciation for the promises that He's made, for His Word, um, for His relationship with me, or to me, maybe I should say it that way. And, and it has changed my whole perspective on Christianity. There are a lot of things I don't understand about God. There are a lot of things I don't understand about the Bible. But when I studied the little bit that I did of the attributes of God to present 15-minute, in some cases 30-minute, broadcast on His attributes, uh, it, it brought me into a completely different relationship with God. I tell you, a greater understanding 
and now things like his grace, uh, his mercy, uh, promises that he has made um, that reflect on his character, on his nature, all of a sudden they take on a different perspective, I mean completely. And so I want to, like, like the Amplified puts it like this, and this is so interesting. It says, this is according to Philippians 3 verse 10 from the Amplified Bible, that I may know him the power of his resurrection. The Amplified says, for my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly, and that in the same way may come to know the power flowing from his resurrection. Now, I don't want to go into that part, just the first part. That it may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. This is what I am expressing to you today. That all of us need to progressively, not just to be more aware of who he is, but have a desire to know more of who he is on a progressive basis. Every day I get to know him better by my experiments, by my experience, and certainly by my knowledge of God as revealed in the Word of God. So I want to know him and understand the wonders of his person, according to Paul and the Amplified, more strongly and more clearly. And I, I believe if when I looked at a study of the attributes of God and it changed my life, I believe it will change your life too. I can tell you this, my faith is greater, my peace or my rest is greater, my confidence uh, in God and in His ability to use me is greater because I know Him better. I will not tell you I know God, but I know Him better than I knew Him before I did the series on the attributes of God. And as I have already begun to prepare and read and watch videos on his other attributes which are a little more abstract like God is infinite for example um, God is all sufficient I haven't shared those yet when, when you think about those uh, at first I was thinking about how do I how do I represent this but I, I digress what I what I want to share with you is that over the past year as I've talked about the attributes of God they have changed my life and I believe they can change your life as well. But you need to, to like Paul, be uh, determined to get to know him and get to know him better. So that's number three, that I may know Christ and that you may know Christ better than you've ever known him before. Let me, let me skip the, well, no, let, let me just go right with it. Uh, our relationship with God. I pray that as you have listened to my broadcast and that you will continue to listen to my broadcast, that you will understand that we are not people of religion. We are people of relationship. Listen to John 15, verse 4 and 5. Uh, if you abide in me and I in you, uh, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit for me. For without me, you can do nothing. So here it is in God's word. God is saying, look, if you want to make it, if you want to be successful, you have to abide in me. And I abide in you. All right? Um, <clears throat> we cannot bear fruit unless we remain connected to the vine, all right? As a branch, you have to be connected to the vine in order to bear fruit. Jesus died on the cross to bring us into a relationship with himself. Uh, last week during the Easter Good Friday message, uh, I should have shared with you about that. Um, but God, God did not send his son to die on the cross just so that we could become religious people. No, no, no. He wants a relationship. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come back and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. What does that say to you? It speaks of relationship. Jesus wants a relationship with us. Too many people accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but then they don't go on to grow, to build 
that relationship with the Lord. They may adopt religious practices, religious customs um, daily in their walk with the Lord. They may have religious things that they do, but they're not necessarily reflecting a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is indeed what he wants. And so when we talked about knowing Christ, uh, as you know him, your relationship with him grows. And as your relationship with him grows, you know him better. So it, they kind of work together. But we want, to, we want to know him and we want to have a relationship with him. Of course, it begins by accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior, where you begin a relationship uh, with Christ. But even so, as you receive him and you begin a relationship, that relationship has to go on and grow on. And, and I really pray that, that God's people would come into a stronger and a better relationship with him as the days and the years go by. I've got four more minutes. And I want to share something with you that really should take more than four minutes, but I'm not um, expounding or expanding on them, but really bringing things that are dear to my heart uh, on this uh, celebration of our anniversary. And I pray that you will take them to heart as well. The fifth one I'll share with you, and the last one for today, is sensitivity and obedience to the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5.25 talks about if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the spirit romans 8 14 for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god well so we, we talk about being uh, led by the spirit walking in the spirit and living in the spirit and that's what i said this is very very relevant for this time in reflection on what i've been sharing with you listen if you want to be guided uh by god during this time of covid 19 pandemic and vaccinations and all kinds of stuff, uh, digital ID and all kinds of stuff, you have to be led by the Holy Spirit. Every day that you live in relationship with God, as you get to know Him better, you need to be more and more led by the Holy Spirit. You cannot afford in these times, beloved, especially as you're seeking to fulfill your purpose in this season, you cannot afford to walk by the flesh. You cannot afford to walk by your understanding. We have to walk and live by God's Holy Spirit. As you get to know Him better, you get to know His Spirit, you get to know His voice, and God speaks to you. So you don't have to run to this prophet or run to this apostle or run to this pastor to get a word from the Lord. No, get a word from the Lord Himself for yourself. Don't depend on me. Don't depend on my broadcast. Don't depend on somebody else who is far more experienced and knowledgeable in the Word of God than I am. But build your own relationship with Him and, and learn to be sensitive to His Holy Spirit. When I come to you on a weekly basis and I share the Word of God, I always go to God and say, God, show me by your Holy Spirit what you want me to share. The message I shared last week on Good Friday, I went to the Lord and said, Lord, what do you want me to share? And what he gave me I didn't like so much, but it was what I felt the Lord wanted me to share, and I shared it. And I, 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 I cannot be more uh, sincere in saying to you, for me, but also for each of you who views this broadcast, learn to hear and distinguish the voice of God. Be led by His Holy Spirit. Walk in the Holy Spirit. Live in the Holy Spirit. Because if we are going to chart a path, if we are going to move into the, the fullness of God's purpose for our lives, we must be dependent, heavily dependent, strongly dependent on God's Holy Spirit. Let me give you another perspective in, in a minute. We are in the last days. We are seeing signs of the fulfillment of the book of Revelation. It isn't just there yet, but the preparations are all being laid uh, so clearly for us. Beloved, these are times where you need the Holy Spirit to guide you, to lead you, not your wisdom, your understanding, but the Holy Ghost to lead you. So you have to be sensitive to God's Spirit working in you, moving with you, uh, and speaking to you so that you can navigate the, the maze of 2021 and should the Lord tarry 2022, you have to be able to rely with confidence on the voice of God leading you by His Holy Spirit. I, I cannot say that any stronger than I've said it, but it is my deep, sincere, earnest prayer 
for myself, for my family, and indeed for every one of you, even though I can't see you, who views this broadcast, that you will live a life in sensitivity and obedience to the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Richly, I'll, I'll try to share. I'll try to share one more with you. It may come into two, but I'll try to share one more with you in terms of my anniversary wishes, bringing things back to your consciousness that I believe are extremely important and certainly are important for me. We'll see you next week, Thursday. <laughs>